Hey everyone, in order to keep your tractor running in optimum performance, you're going to have to conduct preventative maintenance on it. Mine has a service reminder system. It's just a screen that counts the service hours and tells you at certain intervals when it's time to conduct service. Now, I wasn't going to make a separate video just at the 8 hour interval. I was going to make a video that combined all the service intervals. Except for the 200 hour service, the valve clearance will be done in a separate video. Link will be posted in the top right corner. And you can find these service intervals in your documentation as well as on a sticker on the inside cover as demonstrated here. And we'll be conducting today's exercise on this model E130 which I have displayed in other videos. I have purchased for this task the John Deere Home Maintenance Kit model AUC13705 and this is for the E120, E130 and E150. I also have the John Deere Complex Lithium Grease TY24416. A grease gun will also be required for this task. Before I begin, I do want to mark the deck height before I make any adjustments. I'm just placing a piece of electrical tape at the notch that it's set at. I'm going to do a quick loading of the grease gun for those not familiar, unscrewing the cap off of the top. No cartridges in here, the plunger is all the way forward. Pulling from the handle all the way back and then locking it offset so it stays in that back lock position. It's under spring tension and we can see it's on an angle holding it in that lock position back. This is the bottom cap I'm pulling off of the grease and this is the top cap of that cartridge. The metal peel off. Yummy. Slide it into the grease gun bottom first such that the metal flange from the top butts up against the top right here and then we'll screw the top of our grease gun back on. Once it's securely tightened, I'll relieve tension on the back by straightening this spring back out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pumping this to prime it and I'm going to push the air and the old grease out of this unit. And it's going to take about several pumps before we're going to see the old grease that's in this tube come out. And there's the old grease coming out now, and that should be followed by new grease, which should be brighter and yellow. And now we see the new grease just starting to come out now. So now I'm just going to clean up my mess, and this grease gun should be ready to go. I did realize due to the reach on the tractor that a flex hose would have been easier, so I swapped it out and reprimed. Our first order of business will be to lubricate the front axle pivot and axle spindles as well as lubricate the front axle wheel bushings. These tasks are at both the 8 and 25 hour intervals. The book has a diagram of these parts. If you have a magnifying glass, you might be able to see it. Before I begin, I check to ensure the e-brake is on. We're going to start with this wheel spindle right here and I want to clean them off before I work on them so I don't get any dirt in the system or in the grease that I'm trying to push in. Connecting my grease fitting while I smack into the camera a thousand times and I'll point out that I have not greased these. These were done by Lowe's when the tractor was shipped to me. So I don't know how many pumps we're going to get before we see something come out. But this one wasn't too bad. This was about four pumps and we see it coming out the bottom. So that's pretty good. Come back now and clean up my mess with paper towel. We can see how it came out from under. Some older grease was pushed out. And I just take my paper towel and just clean up my mess. And I'm going to repeat the same exact thing on the other side, cleaning first, connecting the grease gun, and it's a bit awkward when using the flex hose as opposed to the rigid connection, but that's all that fits. And we take a look at this one, it only took about uh, two pumps before this thing started pushing the old grease out, so this was good. So I just gave it a little bit more just to see some new grease come out the top and bottom and I was satisfied with that. And again, I'm sure to clean up my mess because that's going to just attract a lot of dirt and dust and grime if that grease isn't cleaned up. Moving on to the wheel hub grease fittings now, we're going to do the same thing, clean everything up. Connect our grease fitting from an even more awkward position than last time. And this basically has to do with which way the tires turned. But we're going to pump this up. And as I'm doing it, eventually I see grease that's just coming out the top here of that bend. Right there. 
I wouldn't have expected that. I we'll see if it does that on the other side too. All sorts of debris on this grease fitting, so there must have been a lot of residual grease sitting on here after it was initially serviced, so we'll clean this one up. Connect the fitting, which is awkward from this position. I should have rotated this wheel, would have been a bit easier. Be that as it may, it's connected. And now I'm going to start filling this with grease, we'll see what happens. And I'm speeding this portion up a bit, but I'm counting the amount of times it takes before I see grease come out. And it came out to about nine times, so there was significant differences in the amount of grease in this side than there was on the other side. And we could finally see grease coming out of the back, definitely not coming out of that bend. I wonder if it was a bad weld that caused that on the other side. I'll make a closer inspection of that later, but we now have enough grease. Cleaning everything up, that's it for this side. Here up front, dead center, forward of the steering, is one more grease fitting that I'm cleaning up right now. And we're going to connect to it. And it's just off center here because of that screw that comes through. So it doesn't make a perfect seal. But as I pump, most of it's getting in there and some of it is just coming out the side, but very little. But it takes a lot and I don't see where... It actually protrudes from and I can't tell if in its initial setup if it was ever greased at all personally because I don't see any coming out to make that determination so I'm just gonna give it enough I tried to evaluate to see where it was going but I didn't so I just put enough in there that I felt satisfied and then disconnected this and considered this one done as I clean up I walk around to all the other ones because over time the pressure pushes grease out a bit more from those fittings so I make sure that all of them are nice and clean before we move on. Those tasks have now been completed. We'll now move on to the next tasks of lubricate mower spindles and pivot points, check mower deck spindle brakes, and while we're there, clean mower deck. I bring the deck to its lowest position, or I attempt to bring the deck to its lowest position. And I'm gonna take a minute to hit everything on the top of this deck with a leaf blower before I get started, cause it's filled with all sorts of garbage. Another really clear picture from the manual for the work we're about to do. First is the deck idler pivot right over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the engagement of the blades a couple times so we can see how that functions. Then I'm going to hit this piece all around with a spray lubricant, trying not to get it like on the belt or the pulleys or what have you, just on this area that comes with contact metal to metal. And then I'm going to run it a couple more times to work that lubricant in. I'll finish it off with the blades in the engaged position like so, with the rod pointed up. And with the 10 mil, I'm going to pop off this first plastic dust shield. There are three screws holding this plastic dust shield on the left hand side. With the screws out, the shield will lift right off and this will give us more area to work. First we can inspect the brake for wear or breakage or whatnot and we see that this one is in perfect condition. I'll lubricate the brake pivot now, just spraying it and the spring as well, so I just hit everything here. And we see below on the pulley is another grease fitting. So I'm going to clean that grease fitting up with a paper towel. And then we're going to connect our grease gun to it. And again, I can't be sure when it was originally delivered how much grease was actually put in here. So I'm just going to put some grease in here until I feel some sort of resistance. Which was a few more pumps than I really wanted to. But that's enough. So I remove it. And I'll clean up my area while I hit the camera. Blow it out one last time after I loosen the dirt. And then put the plastic dust shield back on because this side is done. I guess it could be argued that this work could have been done without removing the dust shield, but it was definitely a lot easier. And you're not going to get all the dirt that builds up in this dust shield where it has that hole to get at the grease fitting. So I think it's a better idea to remove it. Only takes a couple minutes and you can put it right back on and give it a good inspection without it there. And remember, this is only snug down, you don't need a breaker bar, the dust shield is only made of plastic. The other side only has two screws holding on the dust shield, but it is not nearly as easy to access because the way the deck is with that plastic piece in front of me. I'm trying to do this also with the camera, 
not so easy and we see the other screw is right behind this metal plate right here we can't actually see it so a little more difficult even though there's less screws also you see that there's a notch in this plastic piece because as i remove it it's got to be done in just a sort of way because that metal bracket from the deck gets in the way so i had to fiddle with it because i only have one hand to do this with the camera in the way it's a little difficult it's not really normally this hard but there's a little acrobatics involved to get this out in just the right way and there it goes and we see all the dirt trapped in there, which I have removed off camera. And we could get underway looking at this brake pad. And the brake does look good. It's hard to focus. But now I'll spray lubricant on that pivot like I did on the other side. And now I'll connect to that grease fitting so we could add grease to this pulley. Again, as I do that on these pulleys, there's no reference. There's just by feel. Again, because I haven't done the maintenance previously, I don't know how much grease was put in last time. So I'm just making sure that it does have enough grease and I feel some back pressure on this as I apply it. And this seems adequate. We're gonna cut it off right here. Clean everything up and that should be it for this side. This cover was just as fun to install as it was to take out. It didn't help with the camera in the way and what have you though. It's probably easier without. But now I'm just going to install those two screws, torquing them down progressively. And that's it. This linkage by the steering isn't mentioned in the book, but I did see grease on it. So I am reapplying grease over here and on that surface as well where this screw is with this washer because it does look like that rubs and there's some mild rust. So I want to make sure that that has grease on it. Once I finish with this side, I'm just going to go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. The other side allows for a closer view of the camera. We see just getting grease in between those gears and on that metal plate where that washer rubs as the steering wheel turns. Now I'll work everything in by engaging the blades back and forth over and over to move everything around down there. And then I turn the steering wheel in both directions all the way, which I can't do one hand with the camera in my hand. This is just a demonstration of that. So I'm gonna raise the deck all the way up now. Having already cleaned the top, I just want to take a look at the bottom and I could see it from under the mower. Not too much accumulation. I will be using the hose connector later to get any of the rest of this debris that's on here, but it flakes right off. This is not too bad at all. These blades don't have any damage and they're still sharp, so I'm not going to be taking them off. I'll be covering the removal, sharpening, and balancing the blades in a separate video. On the other side, I can raise this flap for a better view and have a look where I could see some grass accumulation here. Again, it'll come off with the hose, it's not too bad. Raising this flap, I could take a look and see that there's no damage, and the blades here again are in good condition, so they're not gonna be removed for sharpening and balancing. These tasks have now been completed, finishing both the eight and 25 hour service. The blades will be done in a separate video, which will be posted in the top right corner. We'll continue on with the remaining 50 hour services, and we'll do so replacing the engine oil and the air filter. Opening the box with a calibrated shovel, we take the contents out of the box. I got this big, over-engineered, waste of money oil filter design. I hate this. I have an air filter, and it looks like the uh, fuel filter is stuck in there, and in there is the two box plugs. So we'll open up the hood. On the left-hand side, we see the oil filter, and it has a factory cable tie that I'll cut out right now. Rotating the filter anti-clockwise 90 degrees to loosen it and detach it from the housing. And now it's removed. Why we need all this crap is anybody's guess. A regular filter draining your oil and filling it would have been just fine. Here's the new filter. Another monstrosity. And instructions. It's so easy. The filter comes with instructions. But okay, there's the instructions. And more waste from packaging that I've never seen on an oil filter. So this rubber piece serves no purpose other than packaging. So you pop it in and you turn it clockwise and it locks in and there in theory you're done though You got to check your oil anyway. Was it easier? Probably marginally easier than filling oil conventionally But it cost a lot more for this filter filled with oil, but we are gonna check anyway And I expect that for all that it cost it's probably gonna be right So I'm gonna clean off the level and lock it down and then take a measurement 
and the level is good. And this really is an over-engineered system. I don't like it. But there you go. That's the oil change with the filter. We'll do the air filter now. Nothing nonsensical here, thankfully. Unscrewing these two screws. We'll remove the cover of the air filter housing. And I'll just carefully pull it up on an angle and detach it. We'll take a look at it. Now this one I would generally blow out with air. It's not that bad, but for the video, I'm gonna replace it with a new filter because we have one. New one's identical, but cleaner. And we'll pop it in from the back first, and then we'll push it down. The front of the housing holds the filter in place. That's it. This screw's a bit rusty, so I'm gonna spray it with oil before I put the cover back on. Now I'll place the cover on and hand tighten these screws back in, and that will conclude the air filter replacement. We finished the oil, the oil filter, and the air filter. Now we're going to continue on replacing the fuel filter as well as the spark plugs. The fuel filter is located right down here. And here's the new one that came in the kit. Pull this out to gain access. And with a pair of pliers, I'll compress this clamp so I can wiggle it out of the way and pull the hose out of this plastic retainer so we can work with it. Now I'll pull and wiggle that hose back and forth until it unseats from the filter and store it up out of the way. Now I'll remove the clamp from the other side of the hose, wiggling it back away from the filter. Not a whole lot of room to work on this side. And while holding the hose for support, I'll twist the filter back and forth until it comes off. And there's the old filter removed. Note the arrow direction. I'm going to push this hose out and under the tractor because there's more room to work down here. And under here, I'm going to install the new filter, noting the direction of the arrow being the same. And I'm going to put these clamps on. And in this video, the clamps are not going all the way on. I can see that. I'll come back later and correct that. Pushing the filter back up into the frame. I then take the other hose and reattach it to the filter. And slide the clamp back down to secure it. We can see I came back and redressed both clamps so they're correctly positioned on the filter. Spark plugs are located just behind the valve covers right over here. I'm going to pull this cable off. A 5 8 plug socket will be used to remove and install them. This actually looks like a well-tuned carburetor, a good burn. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now, and I expect these plugs to look good if the carbs are working good because the engine runs under a constant load on these things. So if the carb's set up and it's working good, I expect that these plugs will look good, and this one looks good just like the other one. Measuring the old plugs for control right here, and I see they're gapped at 30, so that's correct. And I gapped the new plugs also at 30. And I'm going to install it and put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. And when I screw it in, and I only screw it in by hand, I never use the ratchet to screw it in so I don't cross thread. I'm coming in and out a couple times to distribute the anti-seize. And then I'm going to torque it down. And if you don't have a calibrated hand, then use a torque wrench and torque it to 15 foot-pounds as specified in the manual. For those not familiar, it getting tighter and then looser and then tighter because that crush washer could be a little bit unnerving on those spark plugs. But this one's done. I put the wire back on and I'm going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Again, never using the ratchet. Screw it in and out a couple times to distribute the anti-seize. And only when it's fully seated do I use the ratchet to torque it down. Again, 15 foot-pounds. And this will conclude the work on the spark plugs. With that, the fuel filter and the spark plugs have now been finished. We'll now move on to the drive belts and the battery. A quick check of this battery with a multimeter on DC shows 12.3 volts, which is good. I have some dielectric grease. I'm going to apply a small amount to each of the terminals and just coat the terminals to stop them from oxidizing. At this point, we'll fire up the tractor, make sure everything's operating okay with all the stuff that we've replaced. Make sure everything sounds good. We don't have any problems. There's no fuel leaking from the filter replacement. And now we're going to look at the charging system at full throttle. We see 14.3 volts, and that's good. I'll bring it down idle and check again. 14.0, and that charging system looks fine. Dropping the deck all the way down again so we can have a look at the belts. Here's the belt to run the deck, and this one is slack in the off position, so I could go and bend and flex it and make sure there's no cracks in the belt, go around the entire section and make sure there's no damage or replace it. And here's the drive belt that runs the length of the tractor. If there was any issues, I'd replace it, but that'd be a separate video that would just cover belts. Battery's been checked, charging system's been checked, and the belts have been checked. Replacing the belts will be accomplished in a separate video posted on the top right. 
We'll finish off with the cooling fins, the emission filter, and the mower deck. Quite possibly only California ones come with the emission filter, mine doesn't. But I have the instruction right here that shows the cover to be removed, the filter to be removed, and then cleaned, squeeze out the excess water, and then reinstall or replace as needed. I'm going to clean out the cooling fins, the fan, and all surrounding areas of the engine with compressed air to get out all the dust and the grass and the debris that might be caught up in here. Right now, working on the surface areas where I could visibly see everything, and now I'm getting into those areas where the cooling fins are. And if I believe that there was something in there, then I'll pull the plastic shroud and those tins to expose the cooling fins properly so I'll be able to clean them. It's very important since it's an air-cooled engine. That not being the case here, I'm able to see through those areas. I just clean it with compressed air, doing the other side as well. Given the importance of this procedure, there's definitely no reason to rush this job. I said I'd revisit this with the water attachment for the deck cleaning and inspection, so we're going to try it out. Connect the hose, bring it all the way down as low as possible, start the engine, turn on the water, I see the water flowing. Now I'll engage the blade slowly and we will see all sorts of wonderful things come out the bottom and it makes some pretty interesting noise too as it detaches and hits the blades. And I'm not going to run this for a really long time because mine's not really bad but some interesting things do come out and I'm sure and confident looking at the debris that if I let it run long enough that things will be pretty clean under there given what it does. So I shut the blades and shut off the tractor and we'll have a look in a bit. Yeah, it works as advertised. It removes debris. This deck is now ready for leveling. There's a separate video that deals specifically with leveling. Click on the link in the top right corner. We'll take you to it. With leveling completed, it's back in its original running position. And with those three tasks done, all tasks for 8 hours, 25 hours, and 50 hours are now completed or take you to a video to help complete them. And that concludes this video for maintenance on the E100 series as performed on this E130. Hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?